Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Hey, so today it's going to be a four card oracle you pick. So four cards that will be oracle cards. I'm going to use uh, an animal spirit uh, uh, deck for that. And then uh, we'll do a diet cross on those four cards to drill down and see if there's some further meaning for you uh, for that. So thank you your questions, clear your mind, and let's get into this four card oracle you pick with the diet cross. So the cards today are going to be the animal spirit uh, for oracle cards and the Japarizze tarot for the uh, uh, divination. <coughs> I'll show you these cards really quickly. And this animal spirit are by Kim uh, Kranz, she's an Australian artist, and she draws these by hand. So these are uh, hand drawn. All this detail you see is what she suffers through to uh, bring these cards to you. Okay, so she's a wonderful artist. She's got a terrific tarot deck that, uh, that I have. These cards came to me without a guidebook. So I wasn't really sure how to interpret them, so I just go with my gut uh, for these cards. All right, so hopefully uh, this gives you a chance to see all the cards and uh, I get them mixed up without really uh, putting too much damage into them. And um, so that's the purpose of this little display. Then after I put these back in the box, I'm going to show you the Japarizzi cards. And those are just amazing, beautiful, beautiful cards. Um, I, I have those because um, Lena Rodriguez of Tarot Down Under uh, used these cards and I just fell in love with them and I had to have them. Japarizzi, Nino Japarizzi is a woman from uh, Georgia. Not Georgia in the United States as a state, but Georgia in Europe. And um, so this book is amazing. It's got full color um, of the uh, of paintings that she made. A very nice description. And in the front of it even, the fellow who, who makes this description uh, tells us a little bit about himself and about her. And uh, so I just found this a very, very uh, nice uh, deck to use. The author, Stephen Lucas, that uh, says uh, the uh, is the owner and director of the Gallery of Surrealism, a gallery bookstore and publishing house specializing in surrealist and neo romantic art. Born in the United States in 1959, so he's a couple years old, uh, younger than me, and well traveled as a child. Steve became an art dealer at an early age and opened the first of several art businesses where he was when he was 22 years old. He lives in New York City and works there. And he met apparently Nino Japarizzi when he was in Paris at a, an exhibit uh, she was in, and uh, they came to an understanding at some point that she would do the uh, major arcana. Uh, which she did that took about six months and then he approached her about doing the rest of the cards that was about another year so she probably had about two years into all of these actual paintings all together which i love because that tells you that someone really put lots of intention into the depictions that you see on these cards and then the cards themselves they're good cards are good weight they're easy to use and um, they're difficult to interpret i mean you really need to know your rider weight uh, symbolism uh, to uh, to make it uh, with these cards, but you know if you just practice, uh, you'll get that done. But as you can see, these are just really beautiful, beautiful cards. You'd be glad to have the actual painting framed in your home, you know, I would think. But um, so anyway, Nino Jeparitze, beautiful cards. Thank you so much, Lena Rodriguez, Tarot Down Under. If you haven't looked at her, you should. She has a little bit of an edge, but I love uh, Lena. So I spread these cards out so that you can get a look at them. Most people don't get a chance to look at a lot of uh, tarot cards. And uh, and maybe um, it will inspire you to pick up a pack and uh, see what you can do if you haven't already become a tarot card collector or reader. So there we go. That's the two decks that we're using today. Now I'm going to use the Animal Spirit Tarot. Well, they're not tarot. They're uh, Oracle cards. And get those laid out. This will be the third time I've tried to make this uh, reading. Four, one, two, three, four. I'm going to put those away. And get this oracle started. So, hopefully, you've got your mind nice and clear and ready to make a choice of the cards or cards. That uh, work for you. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we're going to reveal them one at a time now. 
And the first card is bear. Oh, wow. So that's the earth energy. Uh, this uh, The bear uh, you think of as really powerful, protective, um, and, um, you know, you think of a, a good mother. Uh, so I would say bear is uh, what we're going to call number one. Number two, that was your card, is the wolf. Also earth energy. This uh, card uh, reminds us of really slyness, um, cunning, and strength. Okay. If you chose number three, uh, this card is the cosmic egg. Uh, this is the symbol of uh, the ether, so divine space, kind of spiritual sight. And uh, for me, this serpent is protecting this uh, cosmic egg. So this uh, brings to mind uh, a very sinister uh, energy, a very protective uh, energy, and, uh, you know, could really uh, poison this energy. And then for number four, if we choose that, chose that one, love this one, actually. So this is air. So this is thought, strategy, uh, objectivity. And uh, this would uh, remind us of um, short-lived is what comes to mind for me. A really bright light, you know, it's here, makes a presence, and then it's gone. So that's number four. So we have bear, wolf, cosmic egg, and firefly. Gonna check to see if this is still filming, and it looks like it is, so that's good. And then we'll get on with the next part of this, which are the Japaritza cards for the Dyadic Cross for these cards. This will actually be the fourth time I've tried to film this today. So I'm anxious to get it done. One. Two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. I'll we'll put these right here for now. I'm going to bring these forward and look for the signifier for this reading uh, with um, the energy of the bear, the earth energy of a mother bear. The uh, sign uh, signifier card for this uh, reading then would be the Queen of Winds. The Queen of Winds would be the Queen of Swords, and Swords are, 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 are truth, uh, energy, uh, justice. And so being the Queen of Swords is really a good signifier, really being in charge of your truths. The challenge to that then is going to be the King of Winds. Well, that's interesting. So the King of Swords. So the Queen of Swords and the King of Swords are having a duel. That's interesting. Who do you think is going to win? You know, my uh, idea is with the king, and it's whether we want to think of this bear as a um, a male energy or a female energy. Um, my instinct was a female energy. So interesting. The char the challenge to the queen of swords is the king of swords. So her truths and justices are up against his, and his may be stronger. She may be uh, with the battle. The um, uh, basis of this reading then is the eight. Of fire. So fire wands, the eight of fire, are things happening rapidly, swiftly, and, and to no good end, you know. So the eight of fire is peril. These are plans uh, coming your way that are, that are dangerous, okay? Eight of fire. In the recent past of this reading, then, is the ten of gardens. So the ten of gardens, with things were great, you know. Uh, gardens are pentacles. Ten of pentacles is uh, familial wealth, happy family, everything you want. Very fruitful. You can see this uh, maiden here is surrounded by lush grapes in a beautiful scenario, a nice little house in the background, um, just everything you think you would want. That's what it was coming off of. Okay, a lot of uh, plenty. In the sky for this reading, then, is the Hierophant, and so this is the judgment, and this is the rules, and this is the government, or this is whatever governs you in your area. So um, that's what we've got here for the Hierophant. So um, that's where we are with the Hierophant. So this uh, is interesting. We'll see how the last card. So the uh, final outcome for this is the Two of Gardens. So the Two of uh, Gardens is the Two of Pentacles really juggling things. I've got to tell you, this looks like a divorce and mom's keeping the kids. That's what this looks like. But, um, you know, figure out how this works into your uh, situation that you asked about. Interesting. Very interesting. So the next card then is going to be the Wolf. So we're looking at Wolf energy here. I'm so um, worried that this uh, camera is going to quit uh, filming at any moment, and I'm having so much trouble with the phone that actually films down. But it really motivates me to get this done. So wolf energy, so sly, slick, strong. Also, another good mother, okay? As a parent, not um, some uh, bad uh, connotation of that. So mother, wolf. I'm going to take six cards. This will be one, two... 
three, four, five, no. And then this one over here will be six. These cards can work on that. So Wolf, Wolf is the influence of this reading. I'm gonna take these six cards and see what the signifier will be. And that is a six of fire, fire of wands, uh, six of wands in celebrations. And this uh, this uh, artist is really playing to the crowd. Uh, she's all lit up and she is the star of the show. She has won the day. So the signifier of this uh, reading is uh, all the strength and the uh, show off uh, that this, this wolf woman uh, has. The challenge to that then is the priestess very interesting. So the priestess comes to us with everything that she needs uh, to make this a, a success. And you can see her just right here. This is her face, her chin, her neck. You can see a crown of flaming, I don't know what. And uh, so the priestess comes to us with all the knowledge, all the creativity that she needs to sweep up uh, this uh, problem. So the Six of Fire is celebrations, but she's challenged by an even higher power, the priestess, who really wants to be in charge. The basis of this reading, then, is the Three of Tides. Tides are cups. So Three of Cups are celebrations. So, so far, you know, we've got very good uh, cards here for this, uh, this situation. Three of uh, Tides is celebrations, very emotional. In the recent past for this, then, is the Eight of Fire. Okay, so fire are wands, plans, uh, eight uh, of fires, a lot of them coming at you. And so these are just boiling up and getting ready to spew. So we're going to have eight uh, situations um, uh, that we're going to have to deal with uh, somehow. In the sky for this uh, reading, then, is a seven of winds. So the winds are swords, seven of swords is typically feeling like, oh gosh, this is a, this is a thievery. This is some sort of injustice. I better look over my shoulder to see if somebody's going to catch up with me. And that's in the sky of this reading. So, I mean, you never want to have that to, have, to be your highest hope, but the final outcome for this reading is the world. So that's the universe. That's the completion of a cycle. It's a happy completion. And uh, then something else is going to start after that. So the world is really everything obtainable. And it's interesting how this side of the, the reading is just so beautiful. And then this side of the reading is a little uh, tenuous. Uh, I would say, let's go over this again. So with this wolf mother, a uh, sly earth energy, you're going to play to the crowd. Um, even higher uh, authorities are, are speaking to you somehow. And uh, it's all based on the celebrations, uh, the passionate celebrations of what had come before. And um, what had come before were just a lot of issues that, uh, that now leave you feeling uh, somehow betrayed. But uh, you're going to come out on top. You're going to complete the cycle with a lot of flourish and uh, start again on something else. So that's the wolf energy from right there. The next card, I'm going to take that one out, is going to be Cosmic Egg. Good grief, how in the world am I going to figure out what cosmic egg is supposed to mean? So we're looking at the snake. We're looking at that rainbow-colored egg in there. Uh, snake, I think of in this, I mean, they've made this, portrayed the snake to be very protective of that ether energy, which is divine spirit, a spiritual sight. So cosmic egg is what's going to um, give us the flavor of this reading. I'm going to take six cards. One, two... Three, four, five, and six. And I'm going to look at the camera and make sure it's still doing what it's supposed to do. Yes, it is. Okay. And continue. Cosmic Egg. Man, I'm really getting tested. Okay, Cosmic Egg. The signifier card for this, then, is the Ten of Winds. It's the Ten of Swords. And if you can just see them in there, there's ten bats hanging out of this tree. Uh, the Ten of Swords. And... Um, the Ten of Swords is usually depicted in the right weight system as a, somebody laying on the ground with ten swords in their back. But here we've got these ten bats, which, um, you know, this doesn't seem like an end to me, but I guess it has to be. Um, the Ten of Swords traditionally is the uh, end, definite finish of a cycle, and then uh, something else is going to start next. So these are two sinister looking cards. The challenge to this Ten of Winds, then, is the Stranger of Tides. So the Tides are Cups, and the Stranger is the equivalent to the Knight. So the Knight of Cups uh, comes to us. Uh, dressed up almost like a leopard looking 
uh, uh, animal, really with a, a mask to present to the world, but really, really somebody who's watching every single thing that's going on. Okay, so the leopard, so the end of this, the end of this cycle, whatever it was, is challenged by the Knight of Cups, uh, really bringing a lot of emotion uh, to the situation. And uh, if I was, if this snake had feelings, it would certainly feel emotional about what it was doing. Of course, the snake doesn't have feelings. Now, the base of this reading is the Ace of Gardens. Gardens are pentacles. So this is a, a an Ace of Pentacles, just a big offering of everything um, uh, bountiful. Okay, so this is just a, a great big offering of let's get this going. And how in the world did we get to a signifier of the end? Uh, the recent pass for this then is going to be the Eight of Wands. Eight of Wands, Eight of Winds rather. And the Eight of Winds is the Eight of Swords. So this one is feeling just trapped, like she can't get out. It, it may be that she could just uh, reach out and turn this handle and the door opens. But she really is in despair uh, over this uh, whole situation uh, that she's in uh, with that snake uh, energy kind of winding around. Uh, the sky for this reading is the uh, Page of, of, of Swords, Page of Swords. Jester of Winds will be the Page of of swords and so this page of swords has captured one of these bats he's bringing it up to the gang to say hey okay here's what i've got and uh what should we do i'm not sure i'm un i'm not confident the page of swords really bringing a message to the front likely outcome of this then is the uh, stranger of swords of winds so that'd be the stranger of winds would be equivalent to the uh, knight of swords and uh, this knight of swords is very interesting this is some very surrealist uh, art that we're looking at here but this is just a, like a centipede really wrapped around this issue there's just some eyes peeking out this bat is almost worn like a like a hat on top of this figure um, who if you squint a little bit just looks like somebody standing with their arms behind their back looking ahead and this could almost be a muffler or a scarf in a cold windy day so uh, so the stranger of winds the uh, knight of swords is the final outcome knight of swords is going to get their point across they're going to get this truth this rule this justice out there let me say this one more time so we started with the signifier and keeping in mind the cosmic egg really don't know if this has some special significance but for me the snake is protecting something precious here so we had the ten of swords uh which really is the end of a cycle we had the uh, knight of cups which is really bringing forth a big dose of emotion. The Ace of Guards, which is the, the uh, Ace, of, uh, Ace of Pentacles, uh, was how this started out. So it was a big offer of value, was how it was the, is the basis of all of this. But in the recent past, we were feeling uh, a bit trapped as this uh, Eight of Winds, that's the Eight of, eight of Swords. And um, the Page of, uh, of, of Swords, the Gesture of Winds, uh, comes to us with an offering that hopefully we can turn into, we can bump it up to this uh, Knight of Swords that will give us a little more power. I don't know. I hope that made sense for somebody. The next one that we have is going to be the Firefly. Love that card. Firefly. Seems like very uh, positive energy, but short-lived. But I mean, with such a big uh, reward for the time that's spent here. Of course, that's air energy, thoughts, uh, strategy, objectivity. So air energy for this Firefly. And look at that thing. He is just ready to make his presence known and uh, get this done. I'm going to take six cards for a Firefly. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Done with these cards. And uh, we will now talk about Firefly as a determining uh, energy for this read uh, this, uh, with the signifier as the Jester of Tides. So this is like the page of cups. So the Jester of Tides is bringing us this cup of, of whatever it is, an offering uh, to, to consider. So someone could be telling us a secret, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, some, some, something that will just flicker and uh, maybe like the Firefly, we should let it die away. The challenge to that, though, is the Five of Tides. So that's the Five of Cups. And the Five of Cups is really worrying over, over something lost. Now, look, this is a bride, it looks like here, who's pregnant. And um, this is in the company of one, two, three, four, five, six, what look like maybe seven or eight, what look like coffins here, um, honestly. So this bride is really in sorrow of, over what she lost. And typically I tell you to, to look around. Well, she could look around. She's got a beautiful day. She's got a, a sunshine uh, to walk toward, um, but she deserves her time of grief. So this uh, 
page of cups bringing us a secret it is giving us a time to um uh, to think about oh this doesn't look good at all this seems like someone's telling us telling us we're being cheated on and here we are pregnant at the altar and we have to let love die and carry on uh, because it's fleeting but the pay of uh, the um, basis of this reading is the stranger of winds so winds are um these are cups yeah, that's right. Okay, so winds are swords. Yes, so swords. So the Stranger of Swords is then the uh, Knight of Swords. Knight of Swords. Uh, so this is a basis for this reading, and this gives us a strong um, feeling of truth, or I'm in, I'm in charge of the rules that we're coming into this with. The recent past of this is the Fool, and the Fool is simply, you know, this was a journey just started, okay? We just went out on it. We could uh, fall off. Um, and it's all very entertaining. So, you know, these things can be so very fleeting. That's the issue here. And the sky for this reading is the Eight of Tides. Very emotional reading with all these tides. So the Eight of Cups is uh, walking away uh, from something of value, leaving it in the past, going toward the light. And, uh, you know, it just kind of mirrors uh, what's happening there in that five. Um, so there's that. And then the likely outcome of this. Oh, don't tell me it's inverted. Ah. Uh, Okay, I don't like to read inverted cards because I don't have confidence in my interpretation of the inverted card. However, when they come, I use them. And I do my best. If there were, if this was upright, this is the Ten of Fire. So this would have been the Ten of Wands. Ten of Wands. No, now I can't think. Ten of Wands. What the heck is the Ten of Wands? Ten of Wands is, um, oh yeah, really having a, you know, a big burden. It's usually, you see the guy who's pushing forward a big bundle of wands. So the Ten of Fire is the Ten of Wands. So this is really having a responsibility that really you have to deal with. And that's the uh, outcome of all of this. Oh my God. So I'm going to tell you what it looks like very uh, obviously to me. Someone uh, brought us a secret. Uh, here we were standing at the altar, pregnant, uh, and now death is uh, love is dying all around us. Um, uh, we thought uh, we came into this with truth and, and justice. It's a, It was a new... Uh, so... Number three probably a relationship really was a spark uh, we're going to have to turn around and leave uh, all this emotion behind and uh, be strong <laughs> so uh, i don't know that this is what but that this is a very direct message i get for these cards um so we'll just see how that all works out well that's what we got i hope that worked for you today if not come back to it another time maybe if you're thinking about someone this could be something you saw here might apply to someone you know I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.